And this is the point where everyone's looking for those four or five gems, those wonderful marketing ideas that are going to make a lot of money. This is where they expect me to be clever. This is where they say to me, okay, bull guy, impress me. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that because I can't. I don't know what you do. What I can tell you is that as a society, we are changing the way we receive marketing messages. We are changing as, as, as with, with the evolution of technology and the way businesses do business with you, we have an entire different way of receiving information in marketing and, and acting on that information. In short, there are three ways for you guys to make more money. Three ways to grow your sales. One is to sell more to the same customer base you've got. Let's just say you've got 1,000 customers, you've got to sell me more stuff. Or sell the same product to the same customer base at a higher price equals more money. Or find more customers. They're the only three ways you can grow sales. Sell more to the same customers, sell the same thing at a higher price to the same customers, or find more customers. Stands to reason. Out of all these three, which is going to be the easiest, do you reckon? Finding more punters is always difficult because I don't know you, I don't love you, I got no idea what you do, and you've got to educate me on that. You've got to push through three and a half thousand marketing messages that I get in a day. Every day you guys wake up, from the time you get out of bed to the time you go to sleep that night, you are subject to three and a half thousand advertising and marketing messages. And of those three and a half thousand, you'll retain 1.97%. What a fantastic result. So if I don't know you, if I don't love you already, if I've got no idea who you are, why am I going to absorb that 1.97%? And I can have the best unique selling proposition, but I've still got to get through the clutter. I've still got stuff to get to you. Second thing, to sell it to me for more money is also difficult because it's above margin. You want to drop your price, but to go and sell it above the price, you have a pretty slick ship. You have a pretty slick operation that shows me perception of value. But then we've got these guys and girls we already know and love, the repeat customer, selling me more stuff. Now, many of you will no doubt believe that you've got a fantastic relationship with the people you do business with because they come back. I challenge you on this. How often do you go to them? How often do you talk to your customer base other than when they come to you or you send an invoice to them? How often do you reach out to them to show them the love? Because, see, when I come to you to spend money with you, that's just me going about my job. That's just me going about my day to get stuff done that I have to get done in order for me to achieve the things that I'd like to achieve in my business. I am paying you the privilege of coming into your business to buy things or services or rent things from you. That's not a relationship. That's just me doing my thing. To build a relationship, we've got to go one step further. We need to build a bond with these individuals so they can trust what you're saying to them and believe, truly, truly believe that what you're doing for them is in their best interest, not in your best budget. It's got to be in their best interest, not your best budget. With this stuff in place, we can now start to build a greater relationship. Now, I'm talking about two levels here. One is your existing customer base. The second level is your community that you work in. In order for us to have the greatest impact in our marketing environment, we're going to build better relationships with not only the customers we have, but the consumers that we could potentially have in our local communities. Now, think of this. Ten years ago, relationships were all about talking to people and engaging people and spending time with them and, and nurturing that relationship. Today, technology stepped in, and we've gone from high touch to high tech. I love when this little exercise. It's actually quite a funny thing. Everyone's got one of these, little Blackberry. They're fantastic tools, aren't they? Okay, I've been on stage now for just on 30 minutes, 37 email messages, six text messages, no missed calls. Now, it could be argued that I've got no mates. That's why no one's called me. <laughs> but the reality of it is we're lazy as business people. We're happy to send someone an email because I haven't got to talk to them, I haven't got time, or text them because it's easier. Again, I haven't got to get into that conversation I might not want to have, particularly Generation Y. But Generation Y could have an entire relationship on text. <laughs> it's extraordinary. We don't want to engage with humans. We've gone totally from high touch to high tech. Moving forward, we need to do a combination of both of these things because that's not bad. It's not bad that I've got 37 emails there and a bunch of text messages. What is bad is no one's engaging me to be closer to their business. I get a lot of emails from hotels, 240 days in hotels. Of course, I get emails from hotels saying, how was our service? Why would I answer, why would I answer that? Why would I go out of my way to answer those emails? Someone calls me. I'll take the time to say, yeah, mate, no worries. I can tell you what, what my stay was like. I can tell you what was good or what was bad. I'll talk to you about the things that I liked and disliked. I'll give you a couple of minutes of my time because you've made the effort to come to me, not to just randomly send stuff out to me in a bulk email in the hope that I might respond to you. 
consider that what are you doing in your business to match high tech with high touch?